Okay, I'm gonna need some energy for this one. Hello and welcome back. My name is Sean and today we're going to be talking about the beginning after the end of book 8 Ascension. This series is absolutely giving me whiplash. It seems that every time I'm negative on the series the next book comes out and I get into the review and then I absolutely love it. And Ascension was very much this case. I thought this was probably the strongest book in the entire series. But I'm going to go into some reasons why, what I think was done well, some things that I thought that were somewhat negative, but more just places for it to improve. And the big thing is, and I keep talking about this, is that I think whenever Turtle Me finishes up the series and starts something new, then he's going to be able to do it with a lot more skill. And I think this book, getting away from everything, really showed what he could do with a new world and some new stuff to do. So without further ado, Let's dive in. So book eight, I'm just going to dive straight into spoilers and give you my general thoughts on this book. It really feels like there's just a massive sense of whiplash whenever I'm reading these books where we'll dive into the progression fantasy and that is that the core of what made me enjoy this series and then we'll start to expand out getting to like the war with Dicathan, just see a bunch of new things introduced and whenever I do have negatives about this series it's normally about those additional things added in there. But whenever we take those like few steps out to expand the conflict or raise the stakes or to have major plot points happen, then it always seems to dial back in and we go back to what I love about the series in the first place, which is that progression part of the fantasy. And this book especially, I felt like this book really showcased my general thoughts that I have been thinking for a while, which is that now that Turtle Me has really developed as a writer, that if he were to do something from scratch, it'd be pretty good. We are completely in a new land with a new culture true new world building to explore we are dealing with a new magic system the whole ether and diving into the stuff that he can do with that and all in all i really enjoyed how this new stuff was handled seeing uh, how we're actually exploring alacria the culture it's actually invested in the world building and i really like the new ether system i think that the previous system that we were focusing on was like too much and trying to figure out how to actually progress it and without just making it being overbearing or like minutely insane detail of just like all right well we're going to get this one percent increase in here having the ether system with the crest and the emblems and unlocking these new understandings especially with us being so close to the end i thought that was a good move and this book in general while i didn't like how we got here from the last book I do think that now that we're here, we're just set up to have an absolute banger of a finale. And really just getting back into this, I think this series really shines as the progression fantasy. I know we have dipped our toes in some epic fantasy and expanding it out and getting in a little bit into some grimdark. I think especially the way that this had started out as a web serial, that because it was started out with Turtle Me being such a new writer, I don't think it was set up just properly for us to really see the full what it could have been. I think if Turtle Me had gone back and started the series now and they used that skill to set up the same way they did it with the Lacria, with the world building and some of the conflict that we can see, then we would have been in a much different experience. But it was good enough to get everyone here. And I'm not taking anything away from that. I think that I've enjoyed the series up until this point. But now that I, we're getting to this book, I can honestly say that we're getting into where it's just good territory. Where I would start to hold this book up against like the other books that I see as like a standard for this genre. And I really enjoyed this. Now to compliment Sandwich Fist, because I feel like my general thoughts are pretty positive. We're going to start out with the negative things about this book in particular. I really feel like taking that move into Lacry was the move and it really helped shine on the new skill level of Turtle Me and I really enjoyed what was happening within the uh, the Grey Arthur saga inside of here or I really enjoyed his arc in this new land but whenever we panned away to it to go into more of Tessie and Ellie that was critical information that we needed to get into the plot. I wasn't as big of a fan as that. I kept wanting us to like kind of fast forward through some of these scenes and while they were critical to plot and I actually thought that the writing and these side characters and Ellie and Tessia specifically was way better and really shined that new skill level. I did feel like I just wanted to rush through the sections that did happen. But I think a lot of this had to do with the breath of fresh air that this new magic system and new culture and world building was happening. I was enjoying it and after being eight books in this series, you know, I'm getting a little tired of the normal Dicathan thing. So when you have something new and novel, I just wanted to skip right past those parts and just continue back to where we left off with the, the Grey Arthur's arc. 
And other than that, the only real criticism I had for this book, given that we are going to like eight books in and, you know, whatever thing said that I found as a flaw in the series at the beginning, I think a lot of it has been addressed. But the big thing was that some of the pacing in this book, even in the Alacria scenes or some of the Relic Tomb scenes, some of the zones just went on a little too long. There was a lot of momentum going into this for me for about the first half of the book. And then we get into the Mirror Zone. And while it did have some cool psychological plots, like I thought the tension was done very well, I do think that that probably could have had, you know, a few chapters less in it. You know, we probably could have cut in this book by about a fourth because it did go on for a bit longer than I think that it needed to. This is a common criticism I have with like Stephen King too, where you will absolutely love three-fourths of it, but then it just kind of drags on just a bit more. With what he was trying to establish, I don't hate it, but if I were to just pinpoint the one place that I think that we could have really improved in this, it would have been just kind of tightening up that pacing and not sitting so long in some of these scenes. I think if we had shortened up that zone a little bit, we could probably increase that extra zone that we had with the different ether races that had gone. I felt that was a really interesting place we could have explored more. We dived a little bit into the sentience race of like of the Shadow Claws and, you know, the bird people, but it would have been cool just to really dive into that zone a bit more because, you know, you have this cool little microcosm of different ether things that could have had a lot more lore going around with the gen and just I thought that zone was worth more of exploring, but it seemed like we spent more time in the mirror zone instead, which was just him sitting down basically assembling shapes in virtual reality. So, you know, just a bit of a missed opportunity. I was much more interested in that place than I was just the mirror zone. And there could have been a lot more exploration done, I think, or some of the time could have been better focused in certain places. So getting into what I specifically liked about this book, I was really sucked in for the first half of this. The pacing, how we just basically did like a hard reset of Arthur's powers, completely stripping him of all the things that we had built up before just to introduce the really specific details of ether and just putting them in a brand new environment. All of it, I just really enjoyed it. And up until about the mirror zone, I was super hooked in and then I just couldn't put it down. I still enjoyed it past the mirror zone, but as I mentioned with my negative, it spread out. I think it went on just a little bit too long where I lost some of that initial fervor, but I got back into it as we continued past and as we started actually diving into the world building. I would say I finished strong, so about three quarters of this book I absolutely loved. One quarter I thought was okay. The world building specifically, when we got thrown into the continent of Dicathan, a lot of it felt like those were things that were just grabbed from other isekais. When Turtle Me started this series, that was like eight books ago as a web serial, and I'm assuming he didn't have anything before this, so the skill of which he would be able to even deliver a compelling world just wasn't at the level that it is now. Now that we have gone through eight books and we've set up, you know, Alacria and just kind of a pseudo lore and history of things to happen, actually diving into how this continent was different from the other continent, you know, what it actually looked like in exploring, you know, Agrona lying to everybody or the secret hidden histories of this world, I thought was super well done. And especially the decision that the Alacrians, while they have their specific culture and how they're definitely getting manipulated into attacking Dicathan. They are still their own group of people with their own customs, and at the end of the day, they're still good people. I'm glad that we didn't go to the root like, oh, they're just these statistic bad guys that are just evil and whatever, but instead exploring some of the culture and then just showing them that they're no better, no worse. They just had literal godlike race come in and tell them what was doing and gave them their own version of history. And with those like twists and turns and plot points, I enjoyed that turned me put out there that the Indrath weren't all they were to be as well. So ha starting out with that message from Sylvia, just kind of setting the stage that everything's not as it's seen. And as we explore it, the Lord of the Indrath clan come and with that context, just decided to destroy everything. I mean, super well done. And the other part that I think I most enjoyed about this book was a lot of the side characters. I really like the addition of Regis as a character. I thought having a lot of Uto's personality in there was a good mix, and especially with how we lost Sylvie at the beginning of it. So having a counterpoint to Arthur that could be in his head, so that way when we're going through some of these progression scenes, then you'd always have that kind of back and forth going. I thought that was a smart move. I really enjoyed him. Having some of the Alacrians come in and actually follow him around, I thought was well done. Ellie's arc, while I thought... Arthur's was better. I did enjoy having her as her own character and the fact that they actually explored the wake of Arthur's leaving. 
So when they all thought he was dead, they actually went in and decided, like, hey, like, he was kind of what we were putting our entire war effort on. Like, what do we do now? And then also just the expectation of being the brother of him. So he's gone. Who's left? And, oh, it's the sister. And then just having that weight put down on you. And also with, like, Tessia leaving him behind and just kind of how everyone would go and react to that. I just That was a really interesting, well-done choice. And I think even though I enjoyed the parts with Arthur more, that these parts really showed off the skill and I think also helped Arthur's parts breathe. It was kind of like action, 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 switch to them and the reflection of what they got left behind. And that also builds up some suspense and tension. So we know whenever he finally does make it back into the war, that it will be with a giant splash. But all in all, I thought that this book was probably my favorite out of all of them and really just shines as what this world could be. Now we're coming up on the last two books and I think only one is out right now. I'm not sure where how far the web serial is but we're at a high point so hopefully we keep this pushing and when I pick up book nine we're just going to continue on that. So with some of those big reveals that we had in this book like how the Endrath are actually the bad guys and while Agrona is worse they're not much better than him. I'm uh, curious to see how we're going to end the series, if everything's going to be wrapped up in one, or if we're going to have another series inside of this universe, or War 2.0, where Arthur will deal with Agrona in this series, and then start his war against the end draft in the next series. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see everything wrapped up and Turtle may start a brand new something, or see what he does with a blank slate. Either way, I'll check it out. I thought it was pretty well done, and for whatever criticism I had of this series, I've been entertained through it, so I haven't at any point just thrown the book down in disgust, and I've had a few books that I've actually reviewed on this channel that it was a struggle to actually review, you know, even in the worst possible circumstances, which I read the last book, and I still, like, finished the book, and at no point was I just going to give up on the series. So I'm curious to see where we're going to go from here. It'll be really cool to see what he does with, you know, Blank Slate, whether that is within this universe or if he just makes a brand new one. But either way, I have enough buy-in to still definitely check him out and just have him in my progression fantasy, like, must-read list. Just for everyone who's left watching, a little heads up what I'm planning on with this series. So I have book nine downloaded. I'm going to get a few other books out in between so I have a little bit of a buffer between this review and the next but because we're coming up on book nine and I don't know when book 10 is supposed to come out or how much of that would be in the web serial or if I want to sit down and actually just finish off the web serial by myself without having it on audiobook I'm not sure yet if I get to the next review and I don't have any of those answers like there some of the plans I'm wanting to do are actually do a comparison to the manual to the actual light novel series see how it stacks up do a couple of videos on how the magic system works and just whatever random shit comes to my head I don't really plan this out much past a week and even with that it's just like hey I like that series I should do more with that series it's been absolutely cool just to see the progression and skill and just going from book one to book eight you know if I don't know how it would be to read those like side by side but just the level of progression that's happened has been like really crazy and I'm always fascinated by indie authors doing these web serials or just indie authors in general because there's no real barrier to publishing. I mean, Turtle Me started on a web serial and that gained enough popularity for him to do his own thing. And there are other earlier examples like Wool. I don't know if Wool would make it in today's market just because book one definitely had some quality issues. But as he continued to write, he got better and better and better. And then it became a very successful indie series that dude made millions off of so seeing someone doing that in like more recent modern times is always cool as someone who likes to write it definitely inspires hope in the future but either way it's been fun to watch and for all of you guys who have stuck around as always thank you for watching and checking out my stuff i will be continuing down the path of the beginning after the end and we'll see where it goes from here but anyway y'all take it easy